Okay, hello again. Um, I wasn't going to come on today, but I had rather a nasty dream and it was relevant to the, um, it, it's directly relevant to the whole Black Moon story. So that's what I'm uh, going to be talking about for a bit. I dreamed that I was back at my old workplace and I was being told off by somebody in charge rather badly and I was very upset. And I woke up because I was upset. It was a bit more to the dream, but it wasn't, most of it was that bit, really. And um, I remembered, I was upset when I woke up. I was, uh, it was six o'clock in the morning. I was uh, sitting in another part of the, of the house, sort of, yeah, crying, really, because I was, you know. I used to dream about the work situation regularly in the uh, past five years. I have dreamed about that uh, very often and it was always only the happy bits and the uh, you know running around bits and uh, carting stuff around and it was a happy atmosphere and the people in it were like I had idealized them to be and uh, this is the first time that I dreamed the way it really was really um, except the other part the happy part was also always there only the mood shifted from one side to the other, like it does in real life, doesn't it? And I, um, I thought back to the, um, the horoscopes that I made for some of those people, and I've been thinking about those horoscopes and my own, my own chart, uh, natal chart, uh, because, of the, uh, because of the videos I'm making at the moment, and because of all the things I told you already in the soul retrieval videos and all the emotional stuff that I've been going through and all that, um, I have been sort of trying to make a picture for you about um, what I'm like, what life has been like and um, a part of the reasons why and the sort of structure underneath all of this is um, the black moon patterns that have been there. And uh, it's really striking that the the one person in the uh, in the company that I was most in awe of and also rather frightened of have been frightened of for eleven years had a similar uh, black moon position to my parents, and except my parents had, like I told you yesterday, um, Pluto conjunct the black moon in Cancer and with him it's Uranus instead of Pluto. Pluto is somewhere else. He's a, he was born later so Pluto shifted, moved on and everybody's moved on and Uranus has come into Cancer and conjuncting the black moon. And there we have somebody who has a very strong, almost visceral I could say, um, Am I going to say distrust? No, I'm not going to say distrust, but a um, less of a need for the home comforts than everybody else has. Cancer, the sign of cancer. Um, remember, I'm a Venus in cancer, so I'm a cook, right? I love to shop for food stuff and spices and all that. And I'm always about making dinner all the time, even at six o'clock in the morning. And um, Venus and Cancer, and I've got Jupiter and Mars and Cancer as well. Those are really strong, uh, this is really a strong part of my personality, is all that um, home stuff. And what with moving house uh, like 20 times in total, <laughs> I uh, have not so been such a happy camper. Camping was okay though. Camping is okay, but um, home-wise it has been a bit of a, a bit of a job to get done. And here we have somebody to whom none of the home um, stuff, like making tea for people and being cosy and comfortable and chatting and, you know, just being connected to each other, none of that really matters. Uranus is even conjunct the black moon. So it's like, I want all this to be completely different now. That's what Uranus says, right? Uranus is always about change and breaking things up and making it all look unrecognizably different and all that kind of thing. And the person who, in the dream, okay, going back to the dream now, um, who was telling me off, um, 
her black moon is by itself in Leo conjunct my sun. Okay, so I'm a Leo. So I've said that three times already. Um, so whatever I do, if I am in the room, okay, and I don't even open my mouth and I sit there with my hands folded neatly like this and I don't do anything and I don't say anything, I'm going to annoy the, the daylights out of her. She's going to have a problem with me, okay? And um, the other bit, uh, so she was regularly triggered by the way I behaved, the way the things I said when I was cocky, being, you know, being a regular Leo, being, um, you know, very self-aware uh, uh, and, um, you know, a bit proud and all that, that sort of stuff triggered the hell out of her. Which I still don't really understand because she was a, I think, personally, a strong, beautiful, proud woman by herself. She didn't need any of the uh, of the stuff that, well, she worked really hard to, uh, to incorporate into her life. And um, I'm surprised that I'm dreaming this now that I have gotten into talking about the truth of things as I have seen and felt it. And remember, to me, I re remind myself every time I am in this field, you know, in these memories with these people, I don't see any of them anymore because um, it has been um, a terrible struggle for all of us. And at that time, I hadn't gone through the whole soul retrieval, soul reconnection, whatever you want to call it, um, experience yet. I was a regular... Um, I was rather um, a pain, I think. I tended to over-rationalize everything, always. I tended to... I always wanted to help in the situation or help people, but I couldn't connect to anybody, anywhere, because there was no me in here. The me was in the hole in the ground, if you remember. And... Um, now we are in a different time frame again. We've moved on, right, from my dreaming, um, innocuous, uh, cutesy stuff about the, the work that we were doing and the, the times we were having and the moods and all the rest of it that I apparently dreamed to, you know, comfort myself or to remind myself of some of part of the situation. I don't know. And then, and now that I've actually moved forward to explaining and putting the words into the world, okay, about uh, the whole process of getting from where I came from to here. And there's so many parts to that. And a number of parts are just, you know, fun parts and entertaining, like the bits about the cards and all that. Some are a bit more serious, like uh, the, the Black Moon story. And I was going to say this to you as well. If there's somebody in your life, no matter where, whether it's work or relationship or parents or anyone, if they, if you have a person in your life that you having huge problems with and they you don't you can't seem to do any anything right okay or um or the, they get on your nerves constantly and you and it's rather not fair you know you can tell that they're trying and whatnot and you just don't know how to deal with them check out the black moon situation if you can in your natal charts because it will it's bound to be in there somewhere. There's bound to be some kind of a thing going on where they drive you nuts or either or you uh, drive them nuts or both because there is this black hole in the horoscope, in the chart where suddenly you're a, you're a kid again and you're completely helpless and... Nobody says this stuff about the Black Moon. They're going on about Lilith and about mythology and about what have you. And it's all, it's relevant. All that stuff is kind of relevant, but it's like dancing around the, the hot um, soup, you know, instead of 
getting into the real subject matter. I think it's time we talked about this stuff. My black moon is like splat in the middle of Pisces. And whenever somebody has got their moon there or their sun or something, I'm going to have a, you know, resistance and um, you, you freak me out and whatever it is that you're saying, don't just don't say it, you know, just go away. And all that stuff bothers us, all of us, every day of our lives. And we don't know where that's coming from. We're blaming the other guy for being whatever he is. Or we're blaming her. We're blaming our mothers. Don't. There's a black moon shit going on in there. Excuse me for the word. It's bad. Okay. If there is, if it's bad, that's, I'm sure that's where it is. And there's um, one more thing. Why is this such a problem? Why is the apogee of the lunar orbit such a big deal? I have a tiny idea about this. It's just an idea that I'm going to give to you and then I'm going to have my coffee and close up for the for the day. Um, I think, or I, yeah, I, the way I see it is the, uh, the moon, when it actually travels along the orbit, it recedes from us, right? And it has a ter terrific, even a gravitational influence on us, uh, gravity-wise. So the, it has influence on the sea, it has influences on all the uh, water uh, bodies on the planets. That includes us. We have, we're 70% water in our bodies, right? So um, the, even just from a gravitational point of view, there's a, from a gravity point of view, I'm not even sure I'm using the right word there. Um, there's an influence. Anyway, the point, there's a point where in the orbit where it's furthest away and it might unconsciously, subconsciously feel like the moon is going to disappear. Like it's going to be gone. There's going to be no more moon. And that would entail if the moon disappears if the moon were to disappear, it's a silly thought, okay? But it's not a thought, it's a feeling, okay? So like in our cells, in our uh, metabolism and all that, um, it would feel like the end of all cycles, the end of all... Um, there's a real necessity for us to have the moon with its cycles, with its signs, with its... Uh, waxing and waning there's a life might actually depend on the moon and her movements much more than we really know that's my idea anyway I have this kind of a um, it's like a suggestion and I'm not sure of any of it and um, maybe there's other people out there who are thinking about this stuff and um, I'd love to hear what you think so coffee time for now thank you very much for being here and i'll probably be back tomorrow with uh, a couple more things to show you in the way of cards or other stuff i have been um, making photo albums for myself that i call com a compassion book it has all the um, a lot of old photographs in them and uh, maybe you'd like to look at those so See you tomorrow, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.